Hello and welcome to a new episode of R for Excel users. In a previous video tutorial, we have looked at data frames and we have also learned that when creating data frames, R might turn certain variable into factors. It's time to learn more about factors. Look at this data table. We have four customers and their associated probability to churn. This could be, for example, the outcome of the churning prediction model. Let's now create this data frame in R using an alternative way respect to the one we have already seen, the F, assignment operator, data frame, and now we can write directly the name of the variables and assign their values to them. For what concerns the customers, and now for the churn, let's see what the data frame looks like. And now let's look at its structure. As you can see, both customer and churn variables have been turned by R into factors. Factors are a compact and efficient way that R uses to store the values of variables that can only take certain defined levels. By default, R will turn any variable that contain characters into a factor. In this case, it makes sense for the churn variable, but it doesn't make sense for the customer one. Let's turn the variable customer back into a character one. To do so, we can use the sCharacter function. The data frame still looks the same from the outside, but if we look at the structure, now customer is back as character. Let's now learn to work with levels within factors. To display the levels of certain factor, we can use the levels function. This shows that churn has three levels, high, low, and medium. We can also see the same information from the structure of the data frame. One important element to note is that R turns the level of a factor into a number. In this case, high has been assigned to number one, low to number two, and medium to number three. This is the same sequence that we see from the levels command. From an ordering standpoint, however, this doesn't make sense. We would expect low, to be level 1, medium level 2, and high level 3. This happens because R has no intrinsic understanding of high, low, and medium, and therefore doesn't know how to order them. In this case, R has turned charm into an unordered factor. We can tell R that a factor is ordered by redefining it. For example, to redefine a factor, we need to use the factor function. We'll pass to it same variable, and then define the levels. This time, we'll list them in the right order. And finally, we'll tell R that this factor is an ordered one. Our data frame still looks the same, but if we look at the structure, we can now see the churn is an ordered factor. If we list the levels, we can now see that low precedes medium and precedes high. You will also note here in the structure, it says low, smaller than medium, smaller than, it doesn't show high, but that's what goes here. Another way to check whether a factor is ordered is to use the isOrder function. And in this case, the answer is true, because churn is now an ordered factor. Order factors are extremely useful for data extraction. For example, say we want to extract all customers that have a medium or high probability to churn. Knowing that high is anyway greater than medium, we could write which obviously doesn't include medium, and now we have both medium and high. As we have seen, factors are extremely useful in R, but they can also be tricky to work with. We'll talk more about them in the next episode about manipulation of data frames. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time. Bye.